Welcome, thank you for joining us. We are going to talk about secular stagnation with Kun Teulings. Kun Teulings is a professor of economics at Cambridge and he served for seven years as the president of the Netherlands Bureau for Economic Policy Analysis. Welcome, Professor Teulings. Welcome. Secular stagnation means different things to different people. How do you define it? Yeah, okay, that's indeed true. People have a different view of what is secular stagnation. Um, let me focus on the view by Paul Krugman and Larry Summers, who think that, that the central issue on secular stagnation is the decline, the steady decline of the real interest rate over the past 40 years. This picture that I show here uh, is uh, the interest rates uh, over the past three, four business cycles. And you see that it comes down from something like 5% in the 80s to a negative number uh, currently. And the consequence of that is that it is very difficult now to have for monetary policy to get an equilibrium on the capital market because a low or negative real interest rate remains also that the nominal interest rates has to be low or negative. And we have the zero lower bound. Nominal interest rates can fall somewhat below zero, but not much. That at some point we can't achieve equilibrium in the capital market. Hmm. So, and how do you explain secular stagnation? What are the root causes for it? Yeah, so a falling price for capital means that there is an excess supply and, and a little demand. So one of the reasons why we have seen a large increase in the supply of loanable funds, supply of saving, is aging. We have seen that uh, the retirement, so that our uh, longevity, our life expectancy has gone up by 10 years. Here's a picture for the four main economies in the world, China, the US, Germany and Japan. And you see that from 1970 till today, life expectancy had gone up by 10 years. During that same period, almost nothing happened to the retirement age. And so we have to mm. fund that additional gap of 10 years. So we say we need to save a lot more to be able to retire that early and then live for another 10 years. And that caused a large increase in the supply of savings. So that was on the main explanations. Mm. So the aging, aging issue is not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, what are the policy implications that you recommend for policymakers? Yeah. No, you're right. Indeed, secular stagnation might be secular, might indeed uh, be with us for some time. One potential solution is to make us net less, to reduce the necessity for us to save. And an easy solution for that is to retire at a later age. Mm. If we retire later, we don't have to save that much to fund our retirement. Another solution is to enhance the credibility of pay-as-you-go pension systems or to let sovereign debt go up a bit. Um, that's in fact equal to the government taking care of our pensions and then we don't have to save. Basically, mm. the current pensions are paid by the current generation of youngsters and that mm. would also solve the issue. And a final thing is to make our institutions more robust to this type of fluctuations that you always have. Uh, and that would be done by increasing the inflation, the natural rate of inflation, for example, for Europe from 2 to 4%. If then during some period there's a temporary dip uh, in the interest rate, in the, in the real interest rate, we wouldn't bound that easily by uh, the lower bound mm -hmm. because we have this gap of 4%. So if you have zero nominal interest rate and 4% inflation, then you can effectively accommodate 4% negative real interest rate. So that would help to stabilize the world. Mm. And in secular stagnation with real interest rates so low, investors may search for yields in other assets. Yeah. Do low interest rates always lead to bubbles? Yeah, so there is a very serious uh, possibility that low interest rates will increase asset prices, in particular in real estate. Here we see a picture for the UK. We borrowed it from Thomas Piketty's well-known book on capitalism in the 21st century. It depicts the capital stock in the UK, uh, the composition of the capital stock. And you see clearly that how from 1970 onwards, the share of housing uh, in the capital stock has increased tremendously. And how can it be explained? Well, very simple. We have a large supply of loadable funds which has to find its way. And housing basically provides assets which give a fixed return. 
there's a low real interest rate, housing prices go with that fixed return will skyrocket. And that's what we have seen happening. So it is very clear that secular stagnation will lead to asset price bubbles. But the worst thing we can do is to raise interest rate to avoid it, because then we would end up in a big stagnation. Mm. Either we have to live with it, or we have the government to take up the excess saving by running a larger sovereign debt and running more extensive pay-as-you-go pension systems. There's no, there are only two alternatives, either high house prices or high sovereign debt. A way in between is only stagnation and recession. Damned if you do and damned if you don't. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Thank you, Professor Tailings. The book Secular Stagnation, Facts, Causes and Cures is out now as a freely available ebook.